Hello and welcome. I'm Liam Clickinger, director of APA San Francisco. American Photographic Artists is a not-for-profit trade organization built by photographers for photographers and exists to provide business tools and creative inspiration, which help photographic artists of all levels run a smarter, more creative and profitable business. I'd like to thank all of our current members for your continued support and encourage that if you're not currently a member, you visit us on the web at apanational.org to learn more about membership and its benefits. Today, I'd like to introduce one of our local members here at APA San Francisco, John Malavik, who has graciously volunteered to help our chapter create and share inspiring content for and about our photographic community. So thanks for all you do, John. Take it away. Hi, everybody. My name is John Malavik, and I own Mixed Bag Media, a video and photo production company with offices here in the Bay Area and in Atlanta, Georgia. Today, we're going to be talking with photographer Aaron Kotovsky, based out of New Haven, Connecticut, who specializes in not just places and things, but people. He really takes the time and makes the effort to make people of all stripes look their very best. And so, you know, this is part of our series talking with winners of the Something Personal contest that our APA SF chapter hosts every year. And Aaron was one of last year's 2021 winners. So Aaron, tell us a little bit about who you are and, and how you describe your work to other people. Hey, John, thanks for having me. And I'm glad to be part of this interview. Um, who am I? Um, I'm a photographer. I specialize mostly in industrial, corporate, military, industrial, portrait. And um, yeah, pretty much that, that's that's mostly it. Um, I mean, like every photographer, I I do camera stuff for money. So that's, you know, if it's. If you have the budget, I'm I'll, I'll shoot it for you. I don't care if it's baby food or or what, but it's unlikely that somebody's gonna hire me for that. Um, yeah, my my approach is really to create compelling and dynamic, well lit photography. Um, the lighting is really really important to me. A lot of this comes from. A lot of this comes from kind of the way the way I came up and the way I grew up, and I come from a really um, working class family. We didn't have a lot, and so mm -hmm. uh, you had to figure things out. Uh, my first car, this '84 uh, Monte Carlo, I had to uh, cut off the left rear section of frame and weld down a new section of frame and redo all the brakes and stuff. And, wow. and that was only yeah, I was only 15. But my my father's a welder. My I work and my stepfather was a welder. My father's of course a welder as well. But um, you know, of course, I mean, I grew up, you know, being you know welding and doing metal fabrication and and stuff. And that's just because we just didn't have we didn't have a lot of money, so we had to be resourceful and do stuff. So I, I kind of bring that into the work that I do, where it's like I can do it and I could I could do it really well. Oftentimes, uh, I'll talk to a client and we'll talk about artistry and I, I my approach is really more of a craftsman I, I I don't I don't um call myself an artist because there's 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 art in everything we do I I respect and value art um mm -hmm. but anything can be art so maybe I don't respect it as much as I think uh, yeah our, our art's great but it's it's nothing everything is art like this this can of seltzer's art in the right context so I mean, who gives a shit? It's 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 really about like what you can do and the repeatable results that you could bring. A lot of what I do is corporate photography, and uh, it pays well, or I get, I feel I feel paid well. Um, and and when you're doing that stuff, you're not. Well, let me let me say it. I'm trying to not be offensive in this conversation here but you're, you're, you're when you're photographing these super rich white people you're, you're you're doing it for the money you're not doing it because like oh man how can i make this billionaire look like a trillionaire um well you call me that's how you're doing it and make them look awesome but you you when you sh when you're shooting high level high profile people 
um, that, that are like CEOs of Fortune 500 and CFOs. Um, it's it's just like shooting any type of celebrity photography without any of the glory. There's no, there's no glory to it. These people have their entourage. They're worth thousands of dollars a second. You're going to have your crew, your assistants, and your lighting has got to be up. It's got to be perfect. And when they walk in, they want to be treated with respect and 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 they want to be uh, uh feel like uh, um like like you're there for them they want to feel comfortable and 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 a lot of these people need a lot of coaching because they don't want to be in front of the camera they're not they're not they're not camera people they're 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 right. money people and they make money so they don't you know they're not working on their abs all day and stuff but um you know i i, I do my best to really try and make people comfortable i feel that that's that's like my one superpower is uh, being relatable and engaging with my subjects because that connection is really important. The, I feel it doesn't matter how good a photographer is, if if you can't connect with your with your subject, you you you're not going to get the highest level imagery. It's it's like a team effort. So um, yeah, that that's kind of like what I do is I craft light and, and I and I approach assignments as as a craft and I try and make these shoots fun. And relatable, even though most of my images are, are are kind of like dark and brooding, and 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 with like this kind of like gravitas and stoicism, all the outtakes we're all laughing and and and, and going nuts. Well, I mean, one of the things that I love about your website, and we're going to go there in a few minutes to look through some of your image, including last year's winner, is that you know I've described it to other people. I've described a lot of your images as having muted intensity but not, not like it oh, yeah sure and it's like but not in a harsh way it's like people who are focused who are who seem very authentic who i love how you have people working with the camera like a lot of action is taking place to the lens not just passively sitting back looking off to the side which I love those kind of looks personally, mm -hmm. but I like how active because like even your images where someone is still, there is still an energy to the image. And so, Thanks, yeah. So tell me about how your the resourcefulness that you learned as you grew up and your relatability on set to people who, you know, we're working a different field, walk a different life. How did those things come together? And how did you come up with the style to, to provide this intensity yet personality at the same time? I mean, did you uh, have any specific uh, references you were working on or is this just a style you developed on your own because it felt right to you? Um, well, my number one influence visually is Caravaggio. And I love the Baroque. I love that really moody lighting. And, and I love, I love the, the transition uh, from Renaissance to Baroque, the way I see it, um, if I, 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 might, I might begin this wrong, is, is where, you know, they're going to paint religious figures, but there's going to be dirt under their fingernails. And th there, there's this element of, of realism uh, to these images when Caravaggio is painting like the Virgin Mary, he's using a prostitute as a reference and she's going to have, you know, fly away hairs and, and, you know, which I, which I retouch out of all my corporate photos, but I, I love <laughs> the grit of that. And, and um, it's, is it a style of my own? I, I mean, I would love to say yes, but I think, I don't know. I, I feel that um, I, I do have a lot of like visual influences and, no, it's uh, what I do is really just for me taking in people that inspire me and art that inspires me, um, like Joel Peter Wicken. I mean, mostly black and white, the work that when I think of him, um, and, but but just very gritty and um, you know, he heavy lighting, heavy subject yeah. matter. Um, Robert Park Harrison is one of my favorites. Very surreal. I I I I would love to do more surreal stuff, um, but I. I'm, I'm I'm kind of like in this niche, and I like it, but I I like it, but it's 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 um it, it's 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 just something that I can't complain about because it takes me all over the world, and um and it, I have a lovely quality of life, and I do cool stuff like photographing that quarry in India. That's that was cool. I was and I was just in India six weeks ago shooting um a ceramics factory, 
Um, and wow. uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. I mean, so, um, um, well, hey, sp- speaking of that specific image of that quarry, I want to go to your website and let's talk about okay. that image since that was your your winning image there? from last year's contest. It is, and uh, but That's then we'll look around and, okay. and and talk about a few others as well. So stand by just one second. All right, here we are. So number one, I love that you're top category is favorites that makes yeah. perfect sense like i i want to know that you like the work you do so by ha- just using the word favorites it's like okay this guy actually likes his work that makes me feel good yeah but yeah. uh the- you know i mean just in in this category there's a lot of the 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 intensity we talked about but here is is your winning image from last year Tell us about this. What is this place? I mean, I I was looking at it earlier and realized how little the dump truck is down at the bottom. And I know how big yeah. these cranes are and they look tiny. What What is this place and how did you end up there? Uh, I was fo- photographing um, a stone quarry and granite stone marble production, getting... Um, travel location images for a company called arc authority uh a couple of years ago and they sent me back again this year and because like uh, the ceo she travels all over the world to get you know really cool stuff and uh their company does um finishes uh like like countertops and 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 um stone related stuff for you know large uh new construction and i had the uh, the opportunity to go and shoot some of these places and this quarry wow. in particular in i think Daipur, india we 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 went there and and, and uh, shooting uh kind of in the lower left that's where you drive into the quarry and it's, it was just amazing and and when you approach it, you're you're kind of in this like the sandbox, and then there's these really cool geometric shapes that are cut into it. Um, now I, I didn't think it would, I didn't know it would look this cool when we're driving up, but I said, hey, I want to get a, a higher vantage point of this place, and I wanted to see if I can get take it all in because when, when you drive in, you're driving through. Uh, um, these carved out passes through these mountainous regions. Um, and, and so it, if you ever been to like Death Valley, uh, when you drive into Death Valley, you kind of descend into it. And it's really cool. It, 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 mm-hmm. un- it like reveals itself. Like it's almost like magic if you've never been there before. This, so this, this, I, I did, I didn't know that it was going to look this amazing, but you know, I wanted to get that, that wider shot. And, uh, you know, I said, you know, I made him drive me to the top of this mountain. And I did, we didn't hike up, but we you know we took this kind of like long serpentine route. And we, we, we only hiked maybe like a few hundred yards. Now it was mm-hmm. 170 degrees out. So it felt like miles. Um, you know, like a, a few hundred yards, just it felt like, it felt like a ton. But um, <laughs> the, the interesting thing is, is that this image is just fascinating when you, when you zoom in, it's on the, the, the internet. So, you know, it's got the interwebs resolution, but in in print, it's fascinating because there's no people in there. There's just nothing going on because they're the, the, the local magistrate uh, didn't get a big enough bribe. So he shut the whole place down. India is so corrupt. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to get any backlash for it. One of the most corrupt places on the planet, super corrupt. Um, And uh, this, this company is actually uh, a horrible company but they they're uh it, it's it's visually you know amazing place so yeah it is it is quite something to look at i mean this is definitely one of those images where it's like you kind of take in the whole thing and then you start looking at all the little parts and pieces throughout and then start to for me at least really realize the scope that of how big this must be but hey while it's, we're here it's so, it's so massive as we're looking at 
I'm noticing all the imperfections from the lens shade in the upper right corner. I'm surprised I didn't retouch that out. <laughs> that's that's because I, I just like I just threw, Too just, late you know, now. threw the lens shade on and yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> well, hey, tell me about that. Like, tell me about your process of. I want I want to know about working with a team. Like, do you shoot by yourself or with a team more? And then when you see things like the lens shade, like when do you know an image is done? Like when do you, like no, when you're on the set, when you're shooting, when do you feel like you got it? But then even when retouching, when do you feel like, yep, it's done, time to deliver? Like kind of how do all those things work for you? That, you know, that's some of what I'm really curious about and what I'm talking to people about is, is how you internalize the work that needs to be done and then how you actually make it happen and execute? That's a good question. Thanks, John. Um, so I always have at least one assistant working with me. On my, okay. I, with in, Just in the India shoots, I don't have an assistant because there's not a budget for that. That's all going to sure. be like available light, very reportage because I'm not shooting uh, – um, we're, we're, we're not doing like a big advertising setup where we're doing a spotlight on a person and those images need to have more of a reportage feel with, with the exception of some of these other shots, which are going to be more, you know, either studio or lit um, or strobe. Now I always love to strobe things. Um, there's a couple images that you're showing now that are not strobe like this, the old man right there, the, um, little bit lower and uh the woman to the left um mm -hmm. you know those are those are just available light um but i like to strobe everything because i like to light i like to take ownership of an image i like to do um what some people might not be able to do or um you know a lot of available light stuff landscape stuff um a lot of lifestyle stuff i just don't really respect it because you just it just when you have beautiful people and beautiful locations you're going to get good stuff I, I we talked earlier and i said i wasn't going to say this but i, I don't I, I just i i don't give a shit i i, I don't respect that type of stuff because it's easy you just have to be there um and and especially when you have professional models a lot of these people are not professional models they're real people and you've got to be able to connect and engage with real people and you have to coach them but all everybody's like oh what do i do with my hands and and so you mm -hmm. gotta get them comfortable you gotta get them uh, uh, working um now oddly a lot of the stuff that is being asked me is to be to do less produced stuff because right now like the 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 advertising and visual media ethos is really on less stroby lit images so i'm trying to adapt to that and, mm -hmm. and uh you know when people are like oh i was talking with somebody and and they're like oh yeah i love the way this the top photographer uses available light and i'm like the fucking sun did they reposition it no they put a bounce card it's like it's like i have a whole like portfolio of that stuff i have i have a ton of happy stuff because again i'm a photographer with the money and i, I don't show it because i like to do moody uh, uh, uh stoic uh, uh images and um but it, that stuff is you know anyone can do it. no offense to well, you guys that do that stuff well, you know, of the the many things that you and I have connected on already, it's I also have always been a lighting person. You know, sure, I'll shoot natural light if I have to, if I need to, if there's a specific reason why that's mm. the best. But on the whole, I am always also like if if I can have a light, if I can physically carry one with me and have one. I'm of the opinion that yeah. it's always better to have some light just because I, I mean, think like so. you said, it's like, you know, it, it adds something extra because I mean, for me, and I, I think in many of your images, the goal is to not necessarily look lit, but to evoke a feeling, you know, whether it looks lit or not, just to evoke a feels like to make it, I think a lot of people don't well, realize that you know, when you're sitting and you know, when you have somebody sitting in a chair for a portrait, 
that just to your eye, that looks way different than what the camera is going to capture. Absolutely. And, and so I, I, again, I like to crack. I like to build it. I like to say I did that. Now mm -hmm. I, 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 I do want to evoke a feeling, but everything has to be purpose built. It's what kind of feeling am I trying to evoke? So when you're looking mm -hmm. at like some of these athletes, I want you to see uh, professionalism. I want you to see commitment, dedication. Yeah. I want you, it, I don't want you to, I, I don't want you to look at an image, um, you know, of, you know, one of these, uh, you know, female basketball players and be like, oh, she's sexy. It, it's like they, they might be sexy, but that's not what it's about. They're they're right. they're athletes and and they're 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 they're, perfor they're performers. So I I am evoking very specific images, and if I and if I don't get that right, then I failed, and that's on me. And that's that's uh you know I tell my clients like, look, I guarantee you're gonna love these images, and and I guarantee my shoots. I know I'm gonna kill it every time. Um, and, and I'm just like unstoppable. So, you know, how do I approach a shoot? Sometimes, you know, oftentimes we're going to try and agree on a look and feel, but when we get on location, I, I don't know what I'm doing half the time. I'm like, I have no idea where the shot is. I'm not one of these photographers like, oh, the shot's here. I've got to look and look and look and look. And then it kind of like comes to me. Um, mm -hmm. as you can see in some of these images, I like to shoot very shallow, when I'm on location, yeah. oh, here's and then and here's like some available light stuff that I was condescending to, but I mean all that stuff is still there's still like it's still lit at the same time, but um, right. you know it's it, oh with the exception of the boxers, um, the black and white boxers. Um, anyway, um, but that was but that 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 those were kind of like an homage to another influ uh, photographer photographer W. G. Smith, who's you know my favorite. Uh, um, documentary photographer i mean um, this image in particular so, for me is just like when is this is this recent is this from the 30s like i mean it's just like to me like that's a hardcore image whoever that guy is yeah, or whatever era it is where it's like that's hard that's that's yeah well I'd like, I'd like to comment on that i mean that so so when I, I was shooting for this boxing gym in new haven connecticut called ring one and it's there's it, it, when you walk in there, it smells like sweat and piss and horrible. People are not going there to be cool on Instagram. They're going there to work out. And and the owner of that gym is a great guy named Brian Clark. Um, the guy that we're looking at right now, his name, his name is Deshaun Smith. Now, they don't have right. a lot of money. And I didn't know if I was going to do like, you know, like cool, evocative, uh, uh, like studio portraits or do reportage style. So I did both. And when I was shooting, I shot like at a slower, slightly slower shutter speed to get a sense of movement. And this guy, uh, Deshaun, right here, uh, Golden Gloves boxer, a, a lovely, beautiful human being who's dead now. Some piece of garbage shot him two oh, summers wow. ago. Yeah. And his little brother was shot uh, last summer. As I mean, it, it, it mm. breaks my heart, like with this gang violence. Um, it, awful. It, it's crazy, it, but this guy was a, a great guy. He had this intensity about him when, when, when he fought and, and really skilled, really good. But, but uh, he's like six foot two, a uh, quiet wow. guy until you get to know him and, and, but very skinny um, and a lovely, lovely human being. And uh, Desh, that's Deshaun. So it's, so. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad you yeah. were there to capture those images. I'm sure his family is too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, hey, uh, yeah, yeah. let's talk a little bit about some some of your work that has been in print. That you know, I've I loved going over you know some some of these images to see the international work you've done, some of the advertising work you've done. Now kind of back to that idea of figuring out the shot kind of once you're there, tell me your process for some of these images, especially in advertising where, you know, you have to account for text that'll be in the frame or a specific frame because it's going to be on the page of a magazine. How much of that stuff do you yeah. know when, when you get a project 
Like, is that shared with you? Is that part of the pre-production conversations or is that partially and sometimes happen on site where you're like, you know what, if you get this frame right here, it will totally make the cut and be in the magazine. Yeah, that's a good question, John. So, so, um, with, uh, let's see, a, a lot of these don't have the designs. Well, the proto images with the, the guys with the tools, th mm -hmm. those layouts were pretty much in place. Now, when I shoot, I shoot tethered and I've got okay. one assistant on the computer and I've got another assistant kind of working with me getting lights. And um, in the past, I would have had a, a wardrobe stylist and hair and makeup. Wardrobe is just like cut. You know, because uh, it's like the first thing to go. Then hair and makeup goes, and there's once you have one assistant. But on advertising shoots, you're definitely going to have you're you're probably going to almost always have wardrobe and hair and makeup and, and two or two or so assistants. Um, right. Let's see. So this this one helicopter shot in particular, the guy on the left, um, we shot that in um, uh either like, I think it was an airport hangar in Florida. And then at like midnight, no, 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 it was a, it was, it was a, it was a helicopter convention. Cause of course he just released this, this, this helicopter and they only had two uh -huh. done in the world. So we had to shoot that. And then I had to fly over the Gulf of Mexico, hanging out of a helicopter, photographing, um, uh, uh oil rigs because, uh, uh, that's one of the main uses for this helicopter is, is like in the, and the oil and gas industry and composite that okay. in there. and you've got to be consistent so on the sunglasses you've got to get sky or something and then so you know we're going to shoot plates and and i and i think we definitely had the um the layouts by the time it came to the, the retouching compositing portion um of that for yeah for uh uh Lockheed Martin, we knew that those were going to be mostly, no, 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 we did not know. Those just, the, yeah, that was after. Um, so sometimes, you know, sometimes you don't. I try and leave room for copy and text um, mm -hmm. wherever, um, wh when we do shoots. And they, and oftentimes clients have an idea of, hey, listen, we're going to probably run the ad so it looks like this. And the clients um, will present, my client, the ad agency will, will present to their clients with Thule, I work that was a B two B. I was working directly with no ad agency, so the okay. creative director at Thule, she was like working with me, and she's on set. But I'm, I'm going to leave, uh, uh, you know, room up there on that. The thing about advertising, though, that um, I don't think a lot of people understand is that a lot of that stuff is storyboarded to death because there's so much money on the line with advertising, and right. they 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 don't want any wild cards. So you'll shoot like from the storyboards, you'll nail that and you're going to be tethered. Creative Dark's going to be there. Probably like two or three pe and people from the client's going to be there to craft service and stuff and, and to hang out on a photo shoot. Um, and then once you get that, then you freestyle, you get your fun stuff and you, you, you try and get some other interesting stuff. Some of that that we're looking at is Andrew Report. Um, for Mutual of America, done by Decker Design, the more colorful okay. ones, um, and 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 they had an idea of like what those were going to look like, and then there's so the Forbes stuff above that, um, the editorial stuff for Forbes, um, I, I I've done a decent amount, and it it's always terrifying because I never know what these locations are going to be. I don't know what the subject's going to be like. Now, and I don't, I'm, I, I'm guessing, can, am I guessing correctly that Sh Forbes shoots are ones where the, your subject has like five minutes and they're like, okay, man, you better be ready. Yeah. 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 But they always give me more. I it, nice. like, they always give me more because I try and make it fun for them. I try and make it. So I take out some of the anxiety, especially like. A lot of these people that we're looking at now, like, are you know beautiful anyway. Uh, like, you know, Roger Federer has been on camera so much, and right. and that guy was really cool. But that was when they launched their sneaker, is is that the one sneaker brand? And he just flew into New York and on a red eye from Sweden, and but he was cool, and 
he nice. gave his time and I got a lot of secondary shots because we were that was so that was for Forbes Japan. Um and I'm sure mm-hmm. Forbes probably uh, ran it, but because we're Forbes, like you know, we were the photographers that were able to set up a, a backdrop and then shoot in another suite and take a ton of time. And the other there were a bunch of other people waiting to shoot, they were furious, but yeah, you, you gotta get your shots. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. That that was that was one that I I learned in the trenches a long time ago. That uh, you know, when there are other shooters there, whether photo or video, nobody else is looking out for you. So you better look out for yourself yeah. and get the shot you need. You got you got to get what you need. Be as respectful as you can to not be a jerk to other people. But when it's your time with the subject, that's your time. And 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 if if you if 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 there's a, a video crew from Forbes that's working with me, we're going to tag team and we're going to communicate. But if there's somebody from, you know, fast company and, or, and I'm not shooting for fast company, then, then you get what you get, baby. Big Aaron's on it. <laughs> well, Hey, tell me about that. I mean, now do you do number one, do you shoot video? Do you get requests for video and, or do you end up on a lot of shoots where there is, where there are photo and video teams shooting side by side. How is that in your world? Yeah. 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 That, that's, that's, there's, there are photo and video teams side by side. That happens a lot. If mm. I'm shooting the assignment, um, I'll either give, give the video for a stage to a colleague of mine. I do, I am doing video stuff now, but the video stuff that I'm doing is not at, well, it's actually, all right. The, the problem is, the problem is, is like, I want to do my own editing and I got to let that go. That's the problem. Cause I do all my own retouching. And, and then when I'm shooting on set with still photo, uh, I'm tethered in, I've got my treatments on my art sauce is coming in. And that, that helps, my, that helps people say, Hey, look, I had 15 minutes for the shoot, but these look awesome. Let, I'm going to, we'll go another 15 minutes and it turns into 45 minutes and, or, or who knows? Right. I mean, I, if the handler's like, look, he's got a hard out in like three seconds. Yeah, it's a hard out. I don't, I don't want to be disrespectful. Um, but uh, because, because I, I have so much ownership of the lighting, I, I like to do my own lighting uh, um, uh, 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 sketches and stuff instead of uh, having my assistants do it. My assistants, you know, I don't leave lighting up. They're, they're there to help, but you know, I, I, I'm not going to let them do like the letting schematic because they're not paid for that. They're, you know, they're right. It's, it's, it's my shoot. And I, and when I was an assistant, I always resented when photographers wanted me to do their lighting. Um, and, and, uh, the assistants are a really important component of your shoot. They're the foundation. So you have to treat your team really well with a lot of respect. And if these guys want to, if they want to light, then, then, you know, they'll, they'll run it by me. But, you know, my, my thing is like I'm I'm doing all this. I'm I'm lighting, I'm shooting, and then the I, I'm doing the post production. So um, you know, I'm I, I gotta probably let go of some of that, which I do sometimes <laughs> on when I'm when I'm really busy, like right now. But uh yeah, that's that's been slowing my my uh my video uh portfolio down a little bit is the desire to just you know have a you know control over that. I hear you, man. Creative control. It's like, you feel like you got to touch everything. Yeah. I know how it goes. Yeah. I feel it too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, so, do, do, but you've got a team though, right? I, well, so I, for me and mixed bag media, I have one other employee, but then we use a lot of freelancers. So I hire yeah. people here in the Bay area in California where I am, but also back in Atlanta where my colleague, Jim Threlkeld, he works and a lot of our projects take place there as well. So we've got, you know, big crew lists in both locations who, depending on the project, we do a lot of shoots with three crew people where it's, you know, a producer shooter, and then kind of a, you know, we tends to be a grip lighting audio third. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, but then we also just did a shoot recently with eight crew people. So kind of depending on yeah. what's needed and what the budget is and what the client actually wants versus what they may say they want, then we're right. able to to kind of build the crew accordingly and go from there. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you scale, you know, that, that's why I tell my clients, like, hey, I, I, whatever you need, we'll just scale it. The production, you know, the production is going to scale according to the budget and we could be yeah. fast and light. And, um, and, and uh, you know, but we're not going to have maybe some of the more polished imagery if we're not going to light it if with a smaller crew. But yeah, that's that's part of the business. You know, it's, it's, it's to be a scalable. Yeah, I do the same thing. You know, I've got my freelancers that I work with and and stuff mm-hmm. and people that travel with me. Um, yeah. Well, hey, before we we wrap up for the day, you know, another one of the things that I'm excited to talk with people about is APA in general. I mean, the fact that, you know, you are one of the winners of of a, a contest from the APA San Francisco chapter, yet you're in New York. Yeah. What? How did you get involved in APA first, even just as a member? And what's it mean to you to have an organization like this that I didn't know about APA until I got to California, but as soon as I learned about it, I loved it. That like, you know, because I've been a, a member of a lot of different groups over the years, different organizations, different trade organizations. And there have yeah. been a few in the past that were right, but there have also been a, a lot that just weren't the right fit. Luckily, APA for me was, and I loved it right away. How'd you get involved? How did I get involved? I got involved because I canceled my ASMP membership. Which I mean, I still have. I I, I renewed it, but um, and I was looking to join a different organization, and then I uh, stumbled into APA because a colleague of mine, John Madeer, um, recommended that, and and uh, he's he's great. He's been all over, does you know similar stuff. So I'm like, all right, John, if you recommend him, I give it a shot. And I've I've really enjoyed. Um, Really enjoyed it in Manhattan. They they have excellent uh, uh, social uh, events, uh, and then they they put on really great portfolio reviews. And I've met some really cool people, and again, really great advice about my work, showing work, and um, I've I've enjoyed it. The, the APA New York has done a great job doing portfolio reviews and and, and getting that happening. They've slowed down a little mm-hmm. bit because of like COVID, but every everybody has um, COVID taking toll on everybody. Um, I I've I, been on I a lot of APA New York webinars and Zoom interviews and Zoom events that that I agree yeah. with. They have great programming. So for you to be a local there, I know what you. I have an idea yeah. of what you get to experience in person, which is very cool. It's cool. There's good people in it. Um, the high caliber photographers. And um, I, I I found out about um, I found out about the uh, APA um, uh, uh, San Francisco <laughs> event. Let's see who how 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 did I find out about that? That was um, it, it, all right. It was I think it was because there was a, a national contest that I was entering. Um, and um, was it Dawn? Who was who was the director at the time last year? I do not recall. The, the chairman. Uh, oh no, she she's so cool. Um, but it was a direct reference to a, a person who kind of you know, turned you on to the contest itself. Yeah. And, um, and, and, uh, I, cause I was entering the national contest and I, um, which, which I won uh third place in last year, which nice. was a disgrace. Well, it should have been first place. My image was so much better. It's terrible. It, could, could, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was bullshit. Cause it was a stupid feel good image. Oh, well, you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to talk bad about other people. Well, I do. There's a horrible image of unbalance of this of this guy with a kid, and, and everybody wants like this feel good crap. Where my image was this beautiful portrait of David Nealman, um that I shot next to this airplane, uh, in this aircraft uh, airplane hangar 
and I had, I, and I threw my assistant in there. She's a, a silhouetted lovely, like technically it's, it's phenomenal. What a disgrace. Sorry, AP judges. Um, uh, oh yeah. 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 I, it's, it's that I love right this there. image. Is, yeah. I is, love, I love these kind it, of it, shots. These are so cool. There was a storm coming in. The wind was going all over the, like, like the lights became animated and, and, and we're trying to sabotage my shoot. And then you've got this bazillionaire standing right there. And I'm like, Hey bro, you look awesome. Let's get after it. Nicole, get in there, wrangle that light. We're going to do this uh -huh. guys. Come on. It's Monday. We're, we're not messing around. Boom. We were nailing it. Guy was taking direction perfectly. And we got a, a, a lovely image. Nice. Third place. What a disgrace. <laughs> what a disgrace. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, Hey, John, I don't, I don't sugarcoat stuff. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm authentically me and yeah, you know, I'm not for everybody, but you know, my clients love me. Um, they know I'm pretty much the best photographer ever because they look at this stuff. I'm killing it. You know, I mean, Hey, that, I was going to say that I knew that I was going to enjoy talking with you and talking about your images. When I read that you were the best photographer ever on pretty much. the about pretty section much. of your website. <laughs> pretty much the best. Pretty much. The pretty best. much. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You talk. You talk to my little five foot tall Cuban mom. She'll she'll give me the best ever endorsement. She wouldn't <laughs> lie to you. Think my mom's gonna lie to you? Uh not today. Not too Hey, on you, right? our 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 next Zoom interview, part two with Big Aaron, we'll have your mom on. Oh my god! Yeah, well, I'll bring my mom on. She's hilarious. She's hilarious. <laughs> she'll 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 Wait. look at images that aren't even in focus. This this is the best image. Aaron, wonderful. <laughs> You're gonna love it. Well, Aaron, yeah. we need to wrap up for today, but thank you so much for being with us. I've had a blast talking with you and getting to know you and your work a little better. And thanks, John. Yeah, you know, and thanks for participating in the something personal contest for you know from across the country for your chapter to our local chapter here in San Francisco. And so for all the viewers out there. You guys keep your eyes peeled. We're going to have more of these videos, more interviews coming soon, but also make sure to sign up for our newsletter to, to learn about what's going on here in the Bay area. And especially keep an eye on our Instagram feed. We have a lot of featured local artists whose images you'll see there as well as information about events too. So until next time, I'm John Malavik for APASF. We'll see you soon. Exactly.